Hi, this video is less about the LCD repair and more about the product that I used for the first time. I had to repair an LCD flat cable. This LCD has 8 wires coming out of it and two of them were disconnected. I am lucky the LCD has an additional set of contacts on the other side. My plan is to connect two wires to these signals and connect those wires to the ones that are disconnected. The problem is that this is glass. I don't know what those traces are made of. There is a good chance I can solder them. So I decided to go to my local electronics store and buy a syringe of silver conducting paint. There was only one kind available. The label is in Spanish, but essentially it is designed for general purpose electronics repairs. They say it gets dry to the touch in 10 hours at room temperature or 20 minutes at 60 degrees Celsius. They claim it has excellent conductivity, mechanical resistance and moisture resistance which sounds a bit too good to be true, but let's try it. Also, they say it only works after it dries. This comes in a syringe and they included a needle for application. Before I put this on the LCD, I decided to try it on a scrap PCB that was going to be sent for recycling. In the test, I will try to connect a couple of contacts from this PCI connector to a flat cable harvested from an old floppy drive that has a similar 1.27mm pin spacing. In the first try, I've made a big mess and shorted the pins to each other. So I cleaned everything up and decided to try one pin at a time. I have access to a drying oven, so I put it there for 20 minutes at 60 degrees Celsius as described in the instructions. Twenty minutes later I took it out and it was indeed dry to the touch, but it still felt soft on the inside, probably because I used a considerably thicker coat than necessary. But I was still a bit skeptical of their claims and decided to err by excess. While drying, the surface got smoother. I measured the resistance and was pleasantly surprised at less than 200 milliohms, so I decided to try it on the LCD. Now, this was great because I was able to connect a wire to the contacts in the glass. I was so surprised by the results that I've decided to run more tests. I found these tests actually more interesting, so I left the LCD repair to the end of the video. I was curious and decided to test the performance of this paint a bit further with more current. So I got the PCI connector again and decided to try a different test. I cut the PCB trace that was going to the pins and soldered the four wires. I will be joining the two contacts on the left and the two contacts on the right. This is a standard PCI connector, so the gap on the left should be around 0.57mm and the gap on the right should be close to 2.41mm. I apply the thick coat of paint to give the connection a good chance. It looks a bit clumpy after being applied, but bear in mind that the ambient temperature was low at around 14 degrees Celsius. I never used this before and I don't really know how long this was stored in the shelf of the store. After drying in the oven for 20 minutes it looks more uniform. This is just a quick, crude measurement, but the resistance between the wires on the closest gap measured under 50 milliohms, and the resistance between the wider gap measures under 200 milliohms, which I think is great. Next, I decided to apply a small but respectable current. I set the bench supply to 1 ampere and connected the multimeter in parallel to measure the voltage drop. On the smallest gap, it measured 26 millivolts, which according to Ohm's law at 1 ampere, it gives us a resistance of 26 milliohms, including the wires that are soldiered, which I found great. Then I tested the wider gap and measured 150 milliohms, which on a 2.4 millimeter gap filled by paint, I will classify as very good. I've decided to leave this until the next day to see if it dried more, but as you can see, I can still easily deform it by poking it with a mechanical pencil. 
As a final test, I have run 3 amperes on the widest gap, and it appears to be even better after further drying during the night. At half a watt of power dissipation, it is not even getting warm to the touch. This is just a cheap Chinese made product, but I've investigated a bit more and there are plenty of big brands that make similar products. I was mostly surprised by some two-part epoxy adhesive variants, which can have resistances as low as less than 1 milliohm centimeter, although this appears to come at a very hefty cost. But this might be a great way to electrically and mechanically connect dissimilar materials that might be hard to connect by other means. Now back to the LCD. This is essentially more of the same. I used the same flat cable as in the first test and covered the other contacts with tape to protect against short circuits. I applied a healthy dose of conductive paint and cured it in the oven. Then I repeated the process for the other disconnected pin. Then I scrapped the plastic from the flat cable. And soldered a couple of wires within there and the new contacts I've made with the silver paint. And it's done.